So here's a quick update on where I'm at rebuilding the motor in my Dodge over there. I got it all tore apart, got everything labeled. Um, got the bed plate painted and we are in the middle of painting the block right now. Um, stripped it down and uh, cleaned it as best I could. So now I'm in in the point where I'm about to start reassembling it and I have uh, have all the parts over here got my new pistons rings uh, ARP bolts gasket set over there um, lash adjusters oil uh, what's that oil pump oil um, timing chain got all that stuff together um, so the old pistons are actually press fit or they're press fit to the connecting rods. Um, here's one of the old ones. I think this is the number one. No, this is the number seven piston. But anyway, they're, so they're press fit, and uh, the old ones are actually flat top pistons, and the new ones are domed pistons. So I've got to weigh everything to make sure everything is as close as possible. So I, I bought me a, a little food scale. You know, it's probably not accurate out to the fifth decimal point or something like that but it's accurate within a gram which is fine you know as pistons and stuff wear you're gonna lose a gram's worth of material I mean the side skirts wear off um, the piston rings wear a little bit I mean everything wears just a little bit so you're gonna lose a gram here and there and add a gram of carbon residue so I mean as long as I'm within a gram I'm okay it's not gonna be the end of the world if it vibrates just a little bit it's not a hot rod it's just an old truck that I don't want to smoke anymore and I don't want it to burn oil like it's going out of style so I'm gonna set this up start trying to weigh these and get everything as close as I can so just to give you an idea of how much a gram is so this blue shop towel with some dirt on it weighs six grams <laughs> so there's you an idea of how much things weigh. So the old piston, rings, and wrist pin for the number seven weigh 541, 542. So I'll call it, it's fluctuating back and forth. So I'll call it 541 and a half. And the new ones. All right, so the new piston, I chose, I chose the high output domed pistons. And these are hyper eutectic. So the new piston, even though it's domed, weighs 365, oil rings, 376, and then it's got these retainer clips for the wrist pins, so we need two of those, puts us up to 378. Wrist pin, 509, and we need, so the second compression ring is black around the outside. The first compression ring is silver around the outside. 533, we're eight grams lighter than the old pistons. Remember, this thing weighs about six grams by itself, so that's really not a whole lot, but we'll just roll with it that way. I'm going to weigh each of these to see where I'm in at to see if everything is the same, and we'll go from there. So i got the engine block painted over there. Uh, i got everything cleaned. About to check the oil clearances, but I want to go ahead and... Uh, get my pistons and rings, I'm sorry, pistons and rods put together. So here's my setup right here. And the rods on this are press fit. And what I, based on my measurements, if I put a hard edge right here on this side of the piston, and then I just jam the piston till, or the wrist pin till it hits the hard stop, it should be almost dead nuts in the middle of the um, connecting rod. So what I'm doing is I'm heating up my connecting rods in my gas grill. Um, 
so we're at 250 right now but I'm letting them heat up in there for five or ten minutes um, and then I'm running over here and jamming my wrist pin through the piston the, the tricky thing is to get the everything set up perfect that way all you have to do is just slip everything together because you you have about two seconds before the rod cools enough where the wrist pin won't slide through there anymore so I did one and I had a different setup and it didn't work I, I didn't get it all the way through where it needs to be um, but I can take that to work and press it in place where I need it to be. So it's not the end of the world. I just don't want to have to do eight wrist pins at work. <clears throat> it's just easier to heat it up, slip it in there, heat it up, slip it in there. So I'll video one and we'll see how it goes and we'll go from there. Moment of truth. That didn't work, dang it. Okay, Whew. So I found the trick. The trick is just ram it in there as fast as you can. So this is the second one I've done where it worked out. Um, and I put this inside that wrist pin because I have to stick my finger through there and it cut my finger the last one I did, so. That's working out quite nice, actually. So that's two that worked perfectly. Got the third one, or I guess, so two that worked perfectly, two that didn't. At least now I've got it down to a science and I can hopefully get these last six in there without any problem. I'm just gonna have to take those other two to work and press them in. There's no other way around it. Well, I guess finish pressing them in there. They're just about where they need to be, but not quite. we go. Let's go get another one. So I got the plastic gauge installed on the crankshaft. You got the ARP main girdle studs installed. Putting all the washers on and this stupid 4.7 you have to have three special ARP studs this one or these two right here and this one and that's for the pickup tube so the kit that I bought for my ARPs have these spacers <clears throat> so you put a nut then you put the spacer then you put another washer so you're also supposed to use a lubrication whenever you're tightening, tightening these down. I did some research and motor oil is an acceptable lubricant. So I'm just using motor oil. I'm not, I'm not building a race car. <clears throat> so I'm not too concerned about it. Being plus or minus a half a foot pound of torque. I just want it to be as close as I can make it without spending a fortune. <clears throat> So I'm dipping all of these in 530 full synthetic motor oil. And this one is probably going to need a little bit of extra because of this so long. I'll tell you this, they thread down on a lot smoother whenever they're lubricated. So anyway, I'm not going to videotape the whole thing. I'm going to thread these down. Torque them, check my plastic gauge, make sure the bearings I've got are the right spec, and then keep moving. Well, the time has come to put the bed plate on for good. I've got my crank bearings installed, I've got them lubricated, I have all of my clearances checked. I've got everything done, I've got my ARP bolts installed. Uh, where they're supposed to be got the special ones where they're supposed to be for the oil pickup tube 
I've written my diagram down. I don't have a printer. My daggone printer's out of ink. But anyway, I wrote it down, got all my specs on here so that I don't lose track of what order to torque them in. So here's something that's a little bit frustrating to me, but whatever, it's a dodge. So there's three external bolts, or three different external bolts, and then I've got my ARP bolts. But there's four different types of bed plate bolts for the ARP bolts. There's the regular ones, then there's a one single long one, and then two long ones for the pickup tube. So I've just got a lot of crap to keep track of here as I start assembling this. So I uh, have my anaerobic sealant for the bed plate, which basically if you do your research, anytime you have two machine surfaces that have to fit together and maintain a specific clearance, but still be sealed from any kind of corrosive fluid or something like that, you have to use anaerobic gasket maker. And basically, once you torque this down, it's, uh, it basically torques down to zero. Uh, and, and it only fills in the gaps between the machine surfaces. So, got this done, and the way the factory service manual specifies is you put down a 2.5 millimeter wide bead in a specific pattern on the bed plate. So what I did is I cut the hole right there in this to 2.5 millimeters, actually just a touch under 2.5 millimeters. And then I'm gonna squeeze everything out on there in this specific pattern, uh, which I also have a picture of on my phone. Uh, cleaned both of the surfaces for the bed plate and the engine block. So now it's just a matter of doing the work. We'll see how things turn out. So this stuff is actually not supposed to dry until there is no air present. So I should have plenty of time to work with it to get everything torqued down. Here we go.